This is Thumbnail Maker. It's a custom GPT that makes YouTube thumbnails. Let's build it out in a web application so that we can find our own customers and charge them to use it. Let's create a business around this custom GPT. To build out the custom GPT, we're gonna be using Bubble. Bubble is a no-code website builder with powerful features like workflows, databases, plugins. It's a front end and a back end. And it's gonna let us build any custom GPT that we can imagine using their API connector. First things first, you need to install the API connector plugin. And we're gonna create a call called OpenAI. I'm gonna expand this here. The call needs two shared headers. Content dash type will be application slash JSON. And the key authorization will be bearer space your secret key. To get your secret key, go over to platform.openai.com. Hover over the left side, go API keys, create a new secret key. I'm gonna call it thumbnail maker. Click create secret key, copy, and then paste into your bubble app like this. In order to generate thumbnail images, we're gonna be using Dolly 3. It's gonna be used as an action. It's a post request, and we're gonna be posting to this URL, api.openai.com slash v1 slash images slash generations. The JSON body is going to look like this. Our model is going to be Dolly 3. Our prompt is going to be dynamic, and we do that by putting a keyword in between two caret brackets. See how it turned green? That automatically adds it down here and we can change it dynamically within the app. And that makes sense that the prompt is dynamic because we're gonna have our users write the title of their YouTube video and then we're gonna create a thumbnail for that video using Dolly 3. Let's copy the horizontal orientation, that's 1792 by 1024. I'm gonna go back into the API call, let's paste it into the size. And now we need to reinitialize the call. This is just a test call to make sure it's a success. For the prompt, let's just write Superman. Hit reinitialize call. This is a successful result. I'm gonna copy this image URL. Let's paste it in just to see what it created. This is an HD picture of Superman. Pretty good. Let's hit save. Now that the API call is working, we can start building out the web application. For this custom GPT, I'm gonna want user accounts. That way we can save the results to a specific user in the database. And also we can eventually charge users to use the custom GPT. So for that, we're gonna need a sign up and login workflow. And what's cool about Bubble is they have this thing called components. So I'm gonna click this. Components in Bubble are pre-built elements that every website and web application need. This is to speed up the development process. I'm gonna scroll down and find the sign up login workflow. Here we go. I'm gonna click this, drag it onto the page. Let's change this text to thumbnail maker. And for the logo, I'm gonna go over to flaticon.com. Let's search YouTube. I'll click download on this first one, PNG, free download. If you're gonna do this for real, you might wanna create a brand new and unique logo. I don't like to worry too much about this stuff. And I'm gonna click this image, go to static image, and upload the logo. Let's also change the button color to red, just to keep a consistent branding. Now we need to connect the name and email to our database. So I'm gonna click data, go over the user data type, click create a new field. I'm gonna call this full name, and it's going to be a text, hit create. By default, there's already an email built-in field. So now we can go to design. I'm gonna click the sign up button, go add workflow. And when the button is clicked, we're gonna add an action, account, sign the user up. The email is going to be input sign up emails value. And the password is going to be input sign up passwords value. Now this sign up form also has a re-enter password. So I'm gonna click require a password confirmation and the confirmation that is going to be input sign up re-enter passwords value. We're gonna add one more field and that is going to be full name is equal to input sign up names value. 
after the user has signed up, we're gonna navigate them to a different page and that is gonna be where they can use the custom GPT. So let's create a new page here. I'm gonna click add a new page. Let's call it thumbnail maker, hit create. Go back to that index login page. Let's click this workflow, go to page and the destination is going to be thumbnail maker. Let's build out the custom GPT thumbnail makers page. I like to double click the page, go to layout, start it as a column. That means it stacks elements from top to bottom. And I like to change the default builder width to something like 500. I know it's small, it will stretch when the page is bigger, but for me, it's easier to build this way. Also, let's make the min height 500. Now this page is super simple. First, let's make a logo at the top. I'm gonna drag in the image element. Let's upload our YouTube icon again. I'm gonna make sure it is a square. Let's make it fixed height. Let's go 50 by 50. I'm gonna center it on the page and let's make it 25 pixels from the top. Next, I'm gonna paste in a text element with a gray background shade. And this is gonna describe what the tool does and how to use it. So I'm gonna double click it, go to layout, make it 25 pixels from the top. I pre-built this element for another tool. I like the look of it, I like the design. If you're gonna be building custom GPTs yourself, I recommend spending a bit of time on the initial elements, your input boxes, your text, your groups, your buttons. Get a color, a look, a feel, a style that you like, and then keep reusing those elements in other places of your app. It makes it so much easier to build things super fast. So here in the appearance, I'm gonna change the text. I'm gonna write, input your YouTube video title and then click create. Our AI will make a beautiful thumbnail for you in seconds. I'm gonna make sure the max width of this is something like 500. Let's paste in an input box. This is going to be the YouTube title. For the placeholder here, I'll put video title. The content format is text. I think 45 pixels is a good height. I'm gonna uncheck fix width and instead make this 500. Let's delete the minimum width. And then we need a button. So I'm gonna paste in a previous element. We're gonna call it create. Let's make sure the color again is red. And for the layout, I'm gonna make it 25 from the top. I'm gonna to call it create thumbnail. Now we need an image element that will display the thumbnail when it's ready. So on the left side, I'm gonna find image. I'm gonna drag it in. Let's go to layout. We're gonna keep element aspect ratio fixed. And the aspect ratio is gonna be what we're creating. So as a reminder, I'm gonna to go to plugins. It was 1792 by 1024. So in design, go to layout again, write 1792 by 1024. To keep everything even, it's gonna be a 500 fix width. Margin from the bottom is gonna be 25 pixels. And there is our page. Now let's build out the workflow. So on the create button, let's click add workflow. And we're gonna add an action, hover over plugins, go to Dolly 3. The prompt is going to be insert dynamic data, input video titles value, and then we need to go find and replace quotation marks and replace them by nothing. Quotation marks break API calls. So just in case our user enters quotation marks, we wanna remove them from the prompt. They're not needed anyways, it's not a big deal. And then I like to add a period, just so no extra spaces or anything funky breaks the API call as well. Now we need a way to store the result, store the thumbnail that we create from this API call. And we wanna store it in our database and connect it to the user that created it. So I'm gonna to go to data, and in the user data type, let's create a new field. Let's go thumbnails. That field type is going to be image, and it's gonna be a list, which means multiple entries, because they can create multiple thumbnails. Let's create this field. And back in workflow, I'm gonna click to add an action. It's gonna be data, make changes to a thing. We are changing the current user. And what we're changing is that thumbnails field, we are adding the result of step one, data, first item, URL. 
what Bubble is gonna do is take the result of that API call, which is a URL. It's gonna save that image URL to the database, and then we'll be able to display it in other places in our application. To display it on the page, we can create a custom state. So I'm gonna to go to design, double click on the page, click the eye icon up here. We're gonna add a new custom state. Let's call it thumbnail. And the state type can be an image. Let's hit create. Now I'm gonna hover over the image that we have at the bottom here. It's gonna be a dynamic image. And that dynamic data is going to be the page, which is called thumbnail maker and it's thumbnail. Now back in workflow, at the end of the create thumbnail workflow, let's add one more action, element action, set state. The element is gonna be the page and the custom state is that thumbnail. We are setting the value as the result of step one's data, first item, URL, so that we can display the thumbnail on the page. Now let's test it out. Okay, the user lands on your signup page. So for the name, my name is Wes GPT. For the email is heywestfrank at gmail.com. Password, I'm just gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Same for the re-enter password, hit sign up. It takes me to the custom GPT page. Let's enter in a sample video title. I trained a monkey to steal people's wallets. Wouldn't that be a great video? Let's hit create. And this is our result. I'm gonna right click, open image in new tab. That's a pretty decent thumbnail. I definitely click on this video. So if the user wants, they can right click, save image as, save it to their computer, go to Canva, upload that image, and then add some text. Now you have an HD YouTube thumbnail ready to upload for your video. I recognize this is a super simple custom GPT, but there are many things that you can do to this to take it to the next level. Here are some examples. In a previous video, we created a credit system where the user can purchase credits. Every time they create a thumbnail, it could cost one credit. You connect Stripe to your web app, charge them for credits, and make money that way. We can add loading icons and loading animations to our buttons and page so the user knows when the AI is making the thumbnail. We can add an image editor like Canva right into our app so that they can edit their thumbnail and add text right when and where the image is generated. This increases the value of your app. You can also play around with the input prompt to get your own special sauce. If you want unique creative thumbnails only designed by your application, I try something like create a minimalistic illustration of this and it's that input video title. The design is extremely simplistic and uses only three colors max. If we try that same video title now, I'm gonna hit create, and you get a completely different style of thumbnail. You can add drop down boxes with various choices, giving your users a choice to what style they want for their thumbnails. The possibilities for a business like this are endless. If you're interested in me diving deeper into all of these things, I have a full exclusive online course, how to build your own custom AI app. Click the link in the description below. And if you like this video, I put two more on the screen right now. Choose the one that interests you the most, click it, I'll see you in there, later.